Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to cover the LCS All Pro Teams from Summer 2023. Keep in mind, as I did in the LPL, I will do in the LCS. This is 100% stats based. I take my opinion out of it. Um, despite watching all the games, I do think that opinion affects these things and I'm not a big fan of that. Um, I do prefer to use stats as well because I feel like fans and um, casters should not be part of the voting process. I believe only people that are on the rift and coaches and uh, GMs should have votes and things like this um, because they have a better idea of who actually is good versus what a fan thinks or a caster. And I know fans like to think that, oh no, I know. It's like, yeah, mm -hmm, sure, you know. Uh, it's, it's definitely, you know more than the pros. But uh, pros do screw up all the time, that is true, but at the same time, I do think um, when push comes to shove, a pro would know more. So we use stats for this. Um, I'm going to go over third, second, and first team, um, tell you which stats they were high in, which is why they end up on the board, and then um, MVP for the split. There's no rookie team because, um, well, why have a rookie team if there aren't? A rookie and why there I mean there isn't a rookie in every role so we'll start with top lane um, third team licorice uh, from Golden Guardians so licorice was second in KDA at 5.4 third in gold per minute at 407 third in damage per minute at 520 remember this is amongst top laners Third in gold diff at 15 minutes, 194 up. Second in CS diff, only four. So very close in laning in top lane. Third in XP, 93. And second in solo kills amongst top laners with 10. So Licorice was third team top lane. Third team in the jungle, Pioshik from Team Liquid. Uh, Pioshik was third in CS per minute at 5.7. Second in gold per minute at 362, which one leads to the other. Third in damage per minute at 384. Second in gold diff at 15 minutes at 476 up. Second in CS diff at 4 up. Second in XP difference at 228. So a little bit bigger of a gap than Licorice had in his role. Um, and third in solo kills with two. I mean, that's kind of meaningless, but nevertheless, Pioshik was third when you um, take all these stats into account. I thought Pioshik was good. I mean, these Pioshik did a lot better in summer than he did in spring. Um, and Licorice obviously had some really good games as well. Third in mid lane, Gory of Golden Guardians. Gory was third in KDA at 4.4, third in gold per minute at 434, second in damage per minute at 687, third in gold difference at two, uh, 346, second in CS difference with 7, so on average was up 7 CS at 15, third in XP at 174, second in solo kills at 7. Gory obviously taking Golden Guardians as far as he could take them. He and River being the difference makers. Licorice, though, having a, a good split as well. Can't emphasize that enough. Um, AD Carry was an absolute uh, sham. So uh, this, so just like in the LPL, there were a couple players on there that would make people kind of be like, ooh, really? Um, that happens here, too. So especially this one, um, this one is definitely the one. Uh, tactical. So, when we think of these stats, the stats are, rel are ranked relative to your role and the stats of themselves, in and of themselves. Some are just output and some are relative to your team. How important were you to your team? Which is why it takes part in the uh, MVP, uh, you know, deal two for me because I think most valuable player is the most valuable player to your team that was a successful team versus a the, just the best player in the league or the best player in the best team. I think it should be the most valuable player to um, their specific team. So Tactical was third. He was second in KP at 74.8. So three out of every four kills he was involved in. Um, first in damage share at 29.6. So no AD carry. 
were was as important to their team when it came to damage as tactical, but that was only third in DPM at 640. Immortals weren't very good. First in solo kills with four. I mean, 80 carries with solo kills. Uh, I mean, that's... Uh, no, that's... I included that stat for the solo laners and the junglers, so I had to include it for 80 carries. Uh, third, Ignar for support. Um, Ignar was third in vision score per minute at 3.35, of course, including the vision um, stats for support. So 3.35 vision score per minute. First in wards placed per minute at 1.96 and placed more control wards than anyone else at over one every other minute. I will say... There is definitely some question marks on whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. But he did end up getting a lot of vision score, so he ends up being up there. NRG are going to Worlds. Ignar deserves some credit for that. Um, obviously, I'm conflating this with a tad bit of opinion to add to what the stats say, uh, because I know that there will be some question marks about his presence on this board. Second in top lane, Fudge. Now, Fudge wasn't high up on as many stats as Licorice, but over the aggregate, he was better. So, first in KDA at 4.1, second in CS per minute at 8.5, second in gold per minute at 4.10. So, CS leads to gold. First in KP, 62.4. So, no top laner was more involved in their team's kills than Fudge. And third in damage share at 23.7. So, laning, he was not top three in his role. Um, but did deal a lot of damage being involved. I mean one thing always leads to another when it comes to something like that fudge being on this board is not a shock to anybody um, at all Second in the jungle river River excellent player um, Second in kda at five for junglers second in cs per minute at 5.8 third in gold per minute at 360 Third in damage share at 16.5. Um, second in DPM, 393. Third in gold diff, um, 158. I should have said this in the beginning. All these stats are from Games of Legends, uh, GOL.GG. Um, so third in gold diff, 158. Third in CS diff, only two. I mean, that's meaningless pretty much. Um, first in solo kills with four. Uh, conflating it a bit river belongs on here right so the stats say this and i mean our minds say this as well and for the most part that usually ends up being the case second team mid laner palafox uh similar to the fudge situation palafox is not dominant in many stats but over the aggregate he's upper half there are no stats where he lacks where gory Lacked in a couple relative to Palafox. Palafox was second in KDA at 4.5. First in CS per minute at 9.1. Nobody else got more fed than Palafox in that respect. And he had more solo kills than anyone else with eight. Those stats are not weighted more than the other ones. But over the entire thing, Palafox is not like lacking in anywhere where Gory, um, Gory did. So Palafox... Second, um, I could see some question marks about that, but I think that uh, Palafox had a really nice split. A lot of people probably not going to give him his flowers, um, and they should. Second in bot lane, Yeon um, from Team Liquid. Not a big surprise. Um, Team Liquid had a good record. Uh, 80 carry being a weird roll. Third in KDA at 5.6, second in DPM, 658. So despite not having a high share, because Team Liquid dealt a lot of damage, he had more damage per minute than tactical. Third in Gold Diff, 163, second in CS Diff, up four, and first in XP Diff, 258. So in the first 15 minutes, Team Liquid's bot lane would get ahead, and um, that puts him on the list. I mean, that gets him up there, because really, looking at my board here and where all the stats are, 80 carry had the least amount of like, um, you know, uh, high level performances and stats versus like, I'm listing all these things for top, mid, and jungle because these guys were the best in that role. And it wasn't really close. Where 80 carry, it was a mess. Um, support. Second, Core JJ. Core 
Score JJ, second in KDA, 4.9. Second in Vision Score per minute, 3.36. And second in Wards Cleared per minute, 0.41. So a little more Vision Score than Ignar, placing less Wards than Ignar and clearing more Wards. That makes sense. Core JJ is obviously better than Ignar. Um, and that's only clearly shown in the stats. Once again, just trying to emphasize that stats do tell us things that we do see with our eyes. I mean, it all correlates together, right? Um, so, obviously, the first team, this is what everyone really wants to see. Summit is first top laner. Um, so, second in CS per minute, 8.5. First in gold per minute, 420. Um, there's a glare on my board. First in damage share, 26.8. So, no top laner had more of their team's damage than Summit did. So first in DPM, 671. That's more than some 80 carries on this board. Actually, that is more than all three 80 carries that end up on this board. Just to show you how much how carry-oriented Summit was, obviously carry-oriented players benefit in stats. Facilitators are hurt by that, but it is what it is. First in gold diff, on average up 688 at 15 minutes. First in CS diff, up 15 CS. First in um, XP difference. Got to get the glare off. 414. And third in solo kills with 9. So Summit, obviously excellent. No surprise. Um, not high up in KDA, though, because when they did lose, he died a shit ton. So, um, you know, that's not a big shock. Um, and that's actually what holds him back uh, in, in the grand scheme of things. First team jungler, Blabber. Blabber is first in a lot of categories. Uh, first in KDA, 5.6. CS per minute, 7.1. Gold per minute, 405. Third in KP at 74.5. First in damage share, 20.1. Damage per minute, 462. First in gold diff at 15 minutes. On average was up over 600 gold first in cs difference on average up 17 cs first in xp 705 first in solo kills with four um solo kills don't really matter but best kda most farm most damage ahead by 17 cs at 15 minutes on average blabber gapped everybody c9 obviously being the best team on paper blabber being a big reason why Going into the split, I've always been saying, and even at MSI, and I said it last year at Worlds, Blabber, to me, was more of a facilitator-oriented jungler, and I keep repeating it. By them putting him on Kindred and other uh, carries this past split, and even this year in general, it has given a wrinkle to C9 that may help them internationally. I'm not expecting a win, but I'm expecting them to be more competitive um, because of that. Now you're less predictable, and that is important. Um... First team mid laner Jojo Pune from EG. First in CS per minute, 9.1. So he's tied with Palafox. First in gold per minute, 447. Second in damage share, 31.4% of EG's damage. The only mid laner with a higher damage share was Quid of 100 Thieves. Um, first in DPM at. Um, 712 second in gold diff at 15 minutes 410 first in cs difference on average up 12 um second in xp difference up 216 so you know a little bit ahead jojo pune's a little bit ahead of his opponents in mid lane um obviously he dies a lot similar to the summit situation gets a lot of farm deals a lot of damage dies a lot so um you know they're not perfect um, which is what holds them back in the end, right? Um, from, you know, the, the other deals. Um, so another big question mark, AD carry in general, people are going to say, you know, I would have these players up here and it's like, okay, that's what your eyes say. That's fine. Um, double left is first once again. So I had him as my MVP in, um, I had him or Gory as my MVP in, in spring. Um, now, like I said, 80 carry was the tightest roll. He had the most CS per minute at 10.4. 
most kp at 77.1 so nobody with more farm nobody um uh with their fingerprints on a higher percentage of kills than double lift in the roll third in damage here at 28.6 first in solo kills at four and you may say to yourself well that's not a lot and it's like if you really look at it nobody was dominant in the stats in 80 carry i can't emphasize that enough um berserker was not Stixie was not um they were up there at times prince certainly wasn't um it is what it is you know so uh double lift is first in um you know the stats and then first in support who um you know this kind of is what it is who he had some really nice moments uh third in dpm 165 first in vision score per minute 3.54 Third in wards placed per minute on average, places seven wards every eight minutes. First in wards cleared per minute on average, clears two wards every five minutes. So he did place more wards, cleared more wards. Third in control wards placed per minute on average, almost puts down, um, I don't know, four to five every 10 minutes. Um, so, you know, I thought who he had some nice moments alongside Stick Say. I thought he was more important to their success than Stick Say was. Um, and that's why he ends up on the board. Now, MVP for this board ends up being uh, Blabber. So Blabber was first in all those stats, right? Um, relative to his role, relative to his team, relative to the entire region, he dominated his role more. He's more important to his team. I mean, he dominated the region. The guy is up. How much CS did I say? 17 CS. Like, it makes me think that I may have written down the wrong number, right? Um, four Camp Diffie on average against River and Pioshek on average. So, if he's not up 17 against them and he's up only 10 even, which is still a, a Diffie at 15 minutes. He's ahead by a bit. Um, against Kenby, he's up 24. Like, he's gapping opponents, right? Where we look at River who was, what, third in CS diff, up only two CS. He's not dominating on average at 15 minutes in the early game. Now River's more facilitator, and like I said, facilitators are hurt when you look at stats. Facilitating is more of an eye stat. Outside of the KP and damage results, you'd say, okay, well, if you're a facilitator, you should be dealing an okay amount of damage. Um, at least in the early game, um, and then high KP because you're facilitating. Like if you're a facilitator with 50% of KP, well, what what are we doing? What are you actually facilitating? You're playing just like, like what are we doing? So um, that's the LCS All Pro teams. Thank you for being a member. Ah, thank you for being my Jesus. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, like it. Subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Follow me on Twitter. Join the Discord. Become a YouTube supporter. And I'll see you again tomorrow.